if you're doing it solely for financial purposes, you're making the wrong decision. Hey guys, this is Amaya Diamond and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we'll be talking about the health professional scholarship program that you can do through either the Army, the Air Force, or the Navy. If this is your first video, make sure to go ahead and click the subscribe button and also check out my very first video talking about my pre-med journey. So with that being said, let's first discuss what HPSP is. The Health Professional Scholarship Program is a military sponsored scholarship that pays your full tuition to any medical school of your choosing. Throughout the years that you have the scholarship, you'll be given a monthly stipend of approximately $2,000. It's enough to pay for your everyday expenses, so food, rent. It also pays for any medical school equipment that you'll need, such as stethoscopes, lab coats, USMLE, um, prep stuff, and it also pays for your step one test. There's two different programs you can do. You can do the four-year scholarship or you can do the three-year scholarship. Whichever scholarship that you decide to take, will determine how many years of active duty service that you have to give back to the military. Keep in mind that while you are active duty, yes, you will still be a practicing physician. So basically you'll just be a military doctor, a doctor doing whatever specialty that you want to do on a military base anywhere around the world. There are a lot of pros to this program, but you have to remember that it's the military. So before you hear free school, you need to think about all the cons as well. In this program, you will be required to do a military residency. When I say required, there are some exceptions to this rule. Like if there's not a residency available at a military base for the specialty that you want, you may be granted permission to participate in a civilian residency. However, on the other hand, if there aren't enough residency slots of your desired specialty, they may ask you to put that desire aside and take one for the team or country and do the general practitioner route until you decide that you no longer want to be an active duty physician. So after your four or three years of active duty service, you're able to opt out and become a civilian physician. Also you have the opportunity to stay in until retirement, which is 20 years for the military, and receive all the benefits from the military. No malpractice insurance, a monthly housing allowance, and medical care, dental care, all for your family. So these are some things that you'll want to consider when considering the scholarship. So now let's talk about the application process. The application opens in the fall of the year before you plan to attend medical school. So in my case, I plan to enter medical school fall 2019. Therefore, I put in my application fall 2018. Specifically, October is the month when application opens. That was really early and you don't have to do it that early. I know someone who just got their application put in and approved a couple weeks ago and it's almost the last week of May. So I'm not really sure when the, Scott, when the time frame ends, but I know it begins in fall. However, you have to remember that there are only a limited number of scholarships. The Air Force has a certain amount that they can give out, the Army has a different amount, and the Navy has a different amount. Usually the Army has more scholarships that they're able to give out than the other branches. Therefore, their stats are a little bit lower if you're trying to go the Army HPSP route. Um, I know for Air Force, you had to have at least a 3.2 GPA, I believe, and a 500 score on your MCAT. Because my stats were well above these standards, I was what you call a matrix applicant. To become a matrix applicant, you really just have to have good grades and a pretty decent MCAT score, and then you're automatically approved for the scholarship. You still have to go through the whole application process, but you're guaranteed a scholarship throughout the whole time. So that was really stress relieving. After you contact a recruiter in your local area about the scholarship program, you'll be in contact with them over the course of the next six months or however long your process takes. The first thing you'll do after you finish all your paperwork, you will be sent to something called MEPS, which is basically just a full body exam that everyone entering the military, no matter what branch, no matter what their desired job is, they have to go to. You'll spend the whole day at MEPS, probably start at 0430 and end your day at 1500 or something around there, which is three o'clock. They'll do a urine sample, a pregnancy test on you, they'll check your eyes, your ears, and just make sure that your body is in good enough con condition to join the military. Since you are joining the military, you do have to meet some physical standards. That means that there's a height and a weight requirements that you must meet to be able to join the military. There's definitely a lot of blogs out there and resources out there to help you lose the weight or gain the weight if you need to do so. Air Force, Navy, and um, Army all have different restrictions, so make sure to check at whatever branch's website. 
the day you leave meds, you will know whether or not you passed. As long as you're clear to go on everything, your application is moved towards Congress and the process is continued. Um, my process took a little longer because like I said, I did apply as soon as the applications opened. I actually had my application ready that day and I sent it in the first day. Um, so with the government shut down and everything, it took a pretty long time for everything to get approved. So, so my application wasn't approved until the end of March of 2019. Um, but once it was approved, I was able to commission. Commission works a little different depending on your recruiter, your location, and if you have any military in your family. I was grateful enough to where I did have two active duty parents who were able to commission me. So I was commissioned on my own time, which ended up being the middle of April. After I got commissioned as a second lieutenant in the Air Force, all my paperwork was sent back to my recruiter and then I was sent to AFIT, or which is the Air Force Institute of Technology. The Army and the Navy will have different organizations that will handle the HPSP students, but AFIT is basically the organization who's handling me and my tuition and anything that has to do with HPSP from here on until I graduate medical school. So now the next steps for me um, is to begin something called COP. COT stands for Commissioned Officer Training, and it's a course specific for HPSP students, so medical students, nursing students, um, lawyers, and chaplains. COT is a five and a half week long course, and you can basically call it the basic training of commissioned officers or healthcare officers, but it's a little bit more than that because it's not only are going to be focusing on fitness, but you're also going to be taking leadership courses and courses about the Air Force in general. You have to remember that yes, your primary objective is to graduate medical school, but you also must realize that you have a huge responsibility as an officer in the military. So that's what they will be teaching you and you'll get all of your uniforms situated and you'll just learn how to be an officer in the Air Force. I haven't gone to COT yet. I actually leave in eight days, so I will definitely make sure to post some videos about that. But from my understanding, COT is a pretty intense course. We're gonna be required to wake up at 0430, do our PT, and we'll be in classes all day. So COT is the first of four or three, depending on how long your scholarship is, active duty tours. Each active duty tour will be approximately 45 days long. It's usually shorter than that, but by requirement, you have to be in the continental US for the 45 days that you have scheduled to go to your active duty tour. I'm not really sure off the top of my head the specific name of the other active duty tours you'll be required to go to, but I know COT is always the first one you go to. Now, most people don't go to COT until the summer between their first and second year. Um, I wanted to go ahead and get it all out the way just in case I wanted to do any pre-clerkships or research between the summer and my first and second year. If you get in your scholarship application early, you have the opportunity to do that. So that's also a plus of getting it in early. But like I said, this is a big decision, so you don't want to rush it. Make sure that this is something that you want to do before you try to get your application in. They're paying your tuition and they're giving you a monthly stipend so you don't have to worry about anything else. You can focus on learning and becoming the best doctor that you can be. If you're doing it solely for financial purposes, you're making the wrong decision. You have to remember that you'll be doing your residency military, that will be like three to four years. And then after that, that's when you go active duty for the four years. That's already eight years of your life spent in the military. Or if you do decide to opt out, you'll be what's called inactive for another four years. Inactive duty is where they kind of get you. It's basically, um, in case World War III breaks out, you, you may be called upon to come back into the service. That also brings up the fact that yes, you might get deployed. Soldiers at war, they need doctors too. Possibly more than we need doctors here on the homeland. So with being an HPSP comes uncertainty. You don't know where you're gonna end up at residency, but no one really does. You also don't know where you're gonna end up as a physician. You might be overseas, you might be in the US, you might be in Montana, you don't know. You're first and foremost an officer of the military, and that will always come before you and your individual needs. So make sure to keep that in mind before considering the scholarship. Other than that, it's a pretty good deal. I will definitely document my experience with HPSP as I continue, but um, yeah. If you guys have any questions, you can comment below. You can also follow me on Snapchat or Instagram. I'll answer questions on there. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. All right, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Be on move. Hold up, bitch. Sit down. Hold up, hold up.